good conversation with anybody on TV. But the thing is, the premier Daily News, or the premier Evan Magazine, uh, and then I, from what I saw, I remember, um, I was selling a booklet of my little articles, just like dollar or something, and uh, the Greek picnic, and he read it, and he, I got, his name is Boomer, I talked about it in another video, I got on the radio, I was on the radio on the only black owned station on FM, for six months, and the owner said, uh, she was a more, she said, you had the best radio show on, um, on you know, you're really out there. And then, uh, and then I made a cover of the Tribune, that had a tattoo of Malcolm X and Nat Turner. Nat Turner led the biggest slave rebellion, and uh, Mac, I ain't gonna tell you Malcolm X was, I didn't know until I was adult. It just, tra it just like made mesmerize me, because I grew up like boozy, like Cosby kid, and then I just transformed into this race conscious person. But then, you know, uh, along the way, uh, I kind of slowed down because I realized that wasn't who I really was. I'm not a black revolutionary because I date white women all a lot um, through my life. I grew up in that environment. My uncle had poor magazines all the time. I got addicted to poor. I read an article recently about Billie Eilish in your generation. She got addicted to the point when she was 11. So it kind of like it led to the way I thought. But don't get me wrong, I had black girlfriends too, but uh, and foreign girlfriends. But uh, and then I met Harvey. Harvey's a Fosse kid. Uh, he grew up in uh, group homes, but he was he got into acting early because um, he was real shy. But he brought him out of the show, and he was one of a kind person. Um, hanging out with him, I moved to the apartment because of him. He was so noisy, and then uh, he helped me move. He said, "You move because of me." I said, "Yeah, yeah." So we became friends. He saw my articles on, uh, the, on my apartment wall about the Daily News, and he said, "I'm an actor." I'm like, "Yeah, really, kid." And then I went to his uh, apartment, and he had pictures of celebrities. So, whoa. And he did so many things. If you remember the Jerky Boys, just from, like, I guess, what, the 90s or whatever, they did prank calls on the phone. He did it in person. I, I'll get a quick story of uh, who he was, basically, my memories of him. Like, we was in Los Angeles. I was his roommate. And then he went on the bus one time, and then um, he said, how are you doing? To the bus driver. And the bus driver said, how are you doing? He said, no, I asked you a question. <laughs> and he would go like he played good cop bad cop at the same time one time in a bookstore the old white guy the cashier and he was like talking to normal didn't get angry he talked to normal the guy was like yo what the? and he talked to this latina girls in los angeles and he didn't know spanish but he kept saying it and he thought he was smiling at first and then after he kept doing it, after he like he didn't break character and then look at me like what the hell is going on and then uh, i remember he did one time it was real crazy in washington square park in new york i was hanging out with him and uh he went to the store, he didn't even tell me. And he little had to rest, um, like something wrong with him. He started knocking all stuff over the shelves, and all crazy. And the guy was like, yo, what's going on, what's going on? I said, no, he didn't have his medicine, he didn't have his medicine. And we walked down, he was still, oh, look like this. He just stood, he looked at me, he said, no. He just stood up walking like, I was like, what the? And then we used to watch the square park, like maybe a couple hundred people, and the entertainment was like this. And he said, anybody from Scotland? Harry raised his hand, and everybody started laughing. He was that type person. And one time we went to the movies in Los Angeles, and he was like, uh, he told a joke before the movie started in front of the whole boys and laughed. He had that type of energy. He inspired me. He died at 36 from seizures. Anyway, uh, I wrote down a lot of stuff. Uh, after Harvey, I married to another girl. She was in grad school. I was a social worker. Her name was Clara. And she was real religious. But she had an abortion by me. I got pregnant by mistake. And me and her got an argument. I said, I thought you were religious. You killed my seed. I didn't want you to do that. And uh, we broke up after that. But Harvey, I, I somehow hooked up with him again, and uh, I went to Los Angeles. I went through my little gypsy stages in life, and then uh, he got me hooked up. Um, uh, first, I was hanging out with him. Then I became a background actor for three years. And as a background actor, I was definitely the most noticeable one on any set, TV set, movie set, movie videos. I'm just outgoing like that. And I talk casually. You ain't even supposed to. I saw over 200 celebrities in three-year period. That's like background actor Hall of Fame. And uh, they told you on the set when you get there, you can't talk to celebrities, they don't talk to you. I'm a rebel. So anyway, they would put me somewhere like 10 miles away from the scene. By the time they shot it for real, I was standing next to one of the main principal actors. But anyway, and I told some funny stories to celebrities. Eddie Griffin is a famous black comedian. He thought it's a heckler. He talked about it for 10 minutes, man. And at the end of the day, you know, I didn't mean anything personal. I said, no, Eddie, it's good. You know, you're a celebrity. I'm good. I, got, I bumped into Pamela Anderson breast by accident. She was really nice. Angelina Jolie and Halle Berry. I talked, and I ain't no creep, but I was talking like for five minutes. I was on the TV set, movie set, and after five minutes, I started looking at them like a regular woman, and they could read my eyes like, yo, you, you know, how many men can actually say that? Then you look at Halle Berry and Angelina Jolie, and they didn't read your mind like, yeah, dude, you definitely wouldn't. And then uh, the thing that made me most scared, uh, most nervous ever been as a background actor, Scarface is my favorite movie. I was talking, running my mouth for some background actor, Albert, I know he's on the set, but I didn't know he's standing back of me. I turn around and I made eye contact with Scarface.
I was like, whoa, that tripped me out. But anyway, uh, and I was dancing with Tyra Banks, and then, oh, I was on Babylon 5, and we had to wear an alien mask. And um, this side, you, you know what the best acting was. And uh, I remember uh, uh, the scene was, like, they're all wearing, it's in the warehouse, they're wearing uh, makeup and the mask, and you go like, Jakar, 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 like he's fighting alien war. And I remember after 10 minutes of doing it, I felt like it was in the military. I really started believing it. And she lifted the mask up, and it was like a red-haired girl and a Jamaican guy. And I was like, Jakar, I was like, I was, and she was looking at me like, okay, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, you can see, I remember in the military, I told Mo about this story. I was young, and uh, I got kicked out of the Marines, but I went to the Army. Then I went to the National Guard, because I always, don't get, I ain't, it take too long. But I remember, it's like, we stabbed a bayonet with, uh, about uh, a tire with a bayonet. And the drill sergeant's tall white guy with a hat on. And I'm not going to say what he said exactly, but he was like, we all psyched up his 10 minutes, his time is paying that. And I was like, yeah. And, and Saddam was like the main boogeyman at that time. And he said, are we going to get those? It's a racial slur in the Middle East. 